Here we are in uh, ninth grade lit. We're getting ready to start part two of Murder Cathedral. And there's been a question about question 21. It says, create a one sentence thesis statement that captures the main message in this passage. I'm going to leave that to you. That's not a question. It's so you know what's in it. There are four things that are in it. And that might be a good way to review it. You know, you seem to be put four things in one sentence. I'm not going to to do that for you, you can do it yourself. Um, so we are now part, we have everybody's part um, uh, assigned. Uh, this is the day that he dies. So we'll start with the chorus. Notice the chorus started the book and the chorus now starts the, the last chapter of the book. So um, Brian, we'll, we'll see what, um, what this is goes over the next page, so we have a couple questions we'll deal with. Go ahead. Okay. Does the bird sing in the south? Only the seabird cries, driven inland by the storm. What a sign of the spring of the year. <clears throat> Only the depth of the old, not a stir, not a shoot, not a breath. But the days begin to lengthen, longer and darker the day, shorter and colder the night. Still and stifling the air, but a wind is stored up in the east. The starved crow sits in the field, attentive, and in the wood. The owl rehearses the hollow note of death. What signs of a bitter spring? The wind stored up in the east. What at the time of the birth of our Lord at Christmas tide? There is there not peace upon earth, goodwill among men. The peace of this world is always uncertain, unless men keep the peace of God. And war among men defiles this world, but death in the in the Lord renews it. And the world must be cleaned in the winter, or we shall have only a sour spring, a parched summer, an empty harvest. Between Christmas and Easter, what work shall be done? The plowman shall go out in March and turn the same earth he has turned before. The bird shall sing the same song when the leaf is out on the tree, when, when the elder and May burst, burst over the spring stream and the air is cleaner and high and voices trill at windows and children tumble in front of the door what work shall have been done what wrong shall the bird's song cover the green tree cover what wrong shall the fresh what wrong shall the fresh earth cover we wait and, then, and the time is short but waiting is long um all right i will read the italics but let's go back to this it says why do you think the chorus Again, note question 22 discusses the seasons. Remember at the beginning, um, it, what was, it was December 2nd, I believe, or 2nd, December 3rd. He talked about the seasons, or she does. Now she talks about them again. Wow. Yeah, Hayden. Like, that's the tone, maybe? Or like... what, what is that tone that he, she said? Well, the first one was like sad. Right. What about this one? I'm glad you remembered the first one. That's as you think. What do you think? What's uh, the tone that's being said here? Uh, kind of like happy because they're moving on to a different season. Mm -hmm. Well, now you you might you might write it that way, but is that the way he writes it? You got to look at the text. That's why I'm asking you to. To look at it and see what you got to deal with. Well, get your pencil. This is something I hope eventually you'll you'll get used to doing. If you want to be an an analyst of literature, whether you want to be or not, you're going to have to be if, while you're in school. One thing you need to know is patterns. And so let me let me show you. I'm going to kind of skim down this page on 53. I want you to circle these expressions. Um, all right. So the fourth line down. On page 53, death of the old. So you circle that. And then the, the next line, the days began to lengthen. Because what are we what are we getting close to in this, although not really that close, but we're closer than we have been all year. Christmas. Well, after Christmas. Spring. 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 Is that what you said? Ooh. Yeah, spring. So, so the days began to lengthen. That's a hopeful thing. So, so far it's one for one. Um, kind of death, on, uh, you know, is, is, but then, then notice it says longer and darker the day. Circle darker. The next line, stifling. 
the next one starved the next one note of death the next one bitter spring the next one wind uh, what do those words seem to convey the, the blue, the, the well, well let me say them again darker day death stifling starved death bitter wind is that is that a happy tone or not it's again it's still although there's a hint of of hope because you, you know you're 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 going to get to spring um so you can put that together there is a little bit of sadness there um but look what he says on the next page the world must be cleaned in the winter we shall have only a sour spring a part summer an empty harvest have you heard people say that? You know, they, they, I've heard people say that. If, if the winter was not really cold, they used to say something like, well, you know, if, if it were a cold winter, we need a cold winter so it'll kill all the bacteria and the germs. We actually said that about summer and the COVID. There was the idea maybe the hot weather will kill the COVID. Um, so maybe it works both ways, but what is the good part of, about having a harsh, cold winter? Snow days. What? Snow days. Yeah, I'm talking about season-wise. No. And the crops will appreciate the crops. Well, yes, but it actually helps the earth kind of cleanse itself. And, and that's the idea. Maybe it does cleanse uh, itself of diseases and bacteria. It says, um, if we don't have a hard winter, it'll be a sour spring, a part summer, and empty harvest. Yeah. So you need rain during the winter, even in the form of snow. You need... Uh, water. So she doesn't know, these people don't know what's coming. They don't know that this day he's going to die. So how again, how can a death be a cleansing? How can a death we've already talked about this, be a a positive thing overall. The death of a good man itself is not positive. You shouldn't murder good people. You shouldn't murder anybody. What, what, uh, what could be the good that comes out of a death? Rest. Well, for that person, for sure. Like a new, like a new, like a change. Uh, definitely. But what did we say about, of course, first Jesus? What did we say about martyrs? They like died for. I mean, they died for their belief. But what do, what do they create? What's what's accomplished? Oh, like, they inspire like others. What? They inspire others to that, pursue the same cause. That's right. So there there is this idea in winter. Harsh winter brings a. A, a better spring and summer and the death of someone like Jesus or in this case like Thomas might inspire Jesus says more than inspire he literally saves people by his death but Thomas might inspire people by being a martyr so you see how this is being framed that something like a death a martyrhood martyrdom can be positive for the church yes so like uh, what's the it is, but then there's that because spring is on the way, it's a reminder that even in the coldest winter, there's something positive that can come out. Just like in the death of a good man, something positive could come out. Um, he does talk about death, clearly, the death of winter, you know, spring is beginning of a new season so there's life but what other death of course is being referred to um, yeah they don't even know it the chorus doesn't even know he's going to die yet that's the dual meaning of number 23 alright so I'm going to read uh, what we're going to have here is a religious procession and so they're going to be priests that would be which row this row it'll be priests they're going to be banners so we need to pay attention to who the priest what the priest banner mean and all of that. Yeah. What do you say the dual meaning of death was? The death of one the one one. All right, so I'm going to read what's in parentheses. Enter the first priest with a banner of St. Stephen, we already know who he is, born before him. This, yesterday afternoon, I had a uh, Christian radio station on um, leaving, and a man was preaching about the death of Stephen. If you know anything about that chapter, when he dies, I think it's chapter 8 um, in Acts, uh, he has this long speech before they kill him. 
Stephen does. And I've always been frustrated about his speech because it seems not to, it seems like an interlude in some of these books. Like, what does this have to do? You've been asked to defend yourself. Then we're going to kill you. And he starts talking about Moses, and he starts talking about Joseph. And, and you're thinking, what does that have to do with you? And he was preaching about that. Um, and here we are talking about it. But this is the banner of St. Stephen, and we'll start with, I guess, Dave. You number one? Since Christmas the day, and the day of St. Stephen, first martyr. Can you read that? Princes moreover did sit, and did witness falsely against him. A day that was always most dear to the Archbishop Thomas. And he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not the sin to their charge. Princes moreover did sit. And he's talking about Stephen, because before he died, or as he was dying, he said that very thing, lay not this sin. In other words, forgive them, Lord. Jesus said the same thing on the cross. Forgive them, they don't know what they're doing. Introit. And introit is a beginning song. It's a song, like a processional might be a beginning song. You, people walk down an aisle during a processional. Uh, and introit is a song being played or sung at the beginning of a service. Um, and so there's apparently a song of St. Stephen. Now enter the second priest with the banner of St. John the Apostle. Now, who is St. John the Apostle? John the Baptist. John the Baptist? Um, uh, no, but that's a good guess. Okay. John was... The other John. Yeah, which, well, who, tell me about the other John. He was the supposed to write this. Yes, which one? John. This is not a trick question. What, which other one? He wrote the Gospel of John. Revelation. Yes. Gospel. So which other one? Revelation. Actually, he wrote three more books. The Johns. The Johns. How many? There are three. There are letters, John 1, 2, and 3, uh, as well as the book of John, the Gospel, as well as the book of Revelation. Uh, you know which one John was in, as a part of the Apostles? I mean, I don't know which number, but do you remember anything he did or anything about him? Yeah. He always gave himself the epithet, the disciple whom Jesus loved. That's exactly right. He, he didn't refer to him by name. He said the disciple whom Jesus loved. And uh, some people think there are two Johns. Yeah. That the John of, of the gospel is not the John of the letters, um, but others, and I'm on that camp, believe that they're all the same John, but... You can, you can make your own choice about that. All right, so here is his banner, and we'll go to Hayden. Hey. Since St. Stephen, a day and the day of St. John the Apostle, in the midst of the congregation, he opened his mouth. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, and our hands have handled, of the world, of the word of life, that which we have seen and heard, declare we unto you. And I, I haven't gone back to check this, but those are the words of First John, I believe, the first chapter of First John. You know how the book of John, the gospel opens? It's, it's different from the other three gospels. Oh, yeah, it says in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God. Very good. It, the other three gospels are called the synoptic gospels. I wish I could remember what the word synoptic means. The same. Synopsis. The same view. Yeah. All right, so those are the synoptic gospels, but the book of John is not considered that because he doesn't, although he goes maybe chronologically, he's more thematic in his view of, of, um, of Jesus' life. Um, and and he, he, he organizes it differently. So anyway, that's John. Now, why would he be included in this group of martyrs? To the island of Patmos, upon which he probably wrote the book of Revelation, but I think he would be considered a martyr because he probably died there. He didn't, as far as we know, he wasn't hung, hanged, or crucified like Peter or the others, but he did die in captivity, we believe. So he would be a martyr. Who's the one that was on the cross? I think, I think it was Peter, and that's that's tradition. We don't know that, but it's tradition. So. What is the 
the, the story is that he decided to do that because he didn't deserve to die as his Lord died. So they were going to crucify him, and he needed to be in a different way because he didn't deserve that. Can you believe that? Sure. I didn't deserve to die the way our Lord died, so show me a different way. Yes? Um, wait, I'm going to be like, what's going on here? Or what's like the well, they, well, I said they were having a processional in the church at Canterbury. A processional is like a parade in a church, and people are walking down the aisle, and one has the, the banner of St. Stephen and followed by the banner of St. John, and so you're next. Um, in Troy of St. John is heard, uh, then there's a third priest with the banner of the Holy Innocents born before him. Do you know what group of people in the Bible that refers to? Daniel, I mean, Matthew, we've lost it. Oh, you become Daniel. I don't know where that came from. Yeah. Okay. The, the, the Holy Innocents. Anybody have any idea who that refers to? The Holy Innocents. Let's read it and see if you recognize it. So go ahead. Uh, the St. John the Apostle it is in the day of the Holy Innocent, out of the mouth of very babes, O God, as the voice of many waters of thunder apart, his song as, a, as it were a new song. The blood of thy saints have not shed like water, and there was no man to bear them. Avenge, O Lord, the blood of thy saints, and Rama, and Rama, and glory to her. Oh, does it refer to all the babies that Herod killed because of Jesus? Yep. Yeah, do you want to explain that? If we could, anybody know that story? Yeah. yeah. Would you explain it quickly? Um, it was when the magistrates came back and told Herod, hey, we found this baby. And Herod was like, I need to find this baby. I'm going to worship him. But that was a lie. And then they didn't tell him where it was. Got mad, so he decided to scoop up every almost two-year-old and murder them. Right, in, in that area. Um, and just to set the record straight, remember the wise men did not go back and talk to him. That's one reason he had to take those because they he, they were told in a dream not to go right, back. They went to the other way. So they went a different way. Um, what do you notice differently about these children dying for Jesus? What did, why did Jesus come into the world? By dying. But notice one of the first acts in his life are a group of children who are dying for him. Uh, nobody else could say that. These named, unnamed children, in a sense, died in the place, they literally died in the place of Jesus. Because he was trying to kill Jesus, but he just killed anybody. And so they, they were like martyrs. Um, they, they, weren't, they weren't conscious of it. They weren't aware of it, but they're in heaven today, and they can say, we died for Jesus. He also died for them in that, in that instance. Um, all right, so we're back to the first priest. Uh, since the holy innocent today, the fourth day from Christmas, rejoice we all, keeping holy day. As for the people, so also for himself, he offereth for sins. He lays down his life for the sheep. Rejoice we all, keeping holy day. Today? Today, what is today? What is the day of Pascal? Today, what is today? But another day, the dusk of the year. Today, what is today? Another night, and another dawn. What day is the day that we know that we hope for or fear for? Every day is a day we should fear from or hope from. One moment, always like another, only a mere retrospection. Retrospection, selection, we say. That was the day, the critical moment. That is always now and here, even now in sordid particulars. The eternal design may appear. Okay, here, here at the end of this ceremony, the four knights come in. And this is an interesting group. Um, the banners disappear. They, they leave. And remember, this is a stage play. So, you know, when he says disappear, they probably go off stage. So, um, first night, which is... Uh, now, can we answer number 24? Yeah, read it. Um, what does the third priest mean when he says every day is the day we should fear for, for or hope from? Kind of up to your interpretation, but what do you think? Anybody have any idea? Did you have a... I guess kind of 
every day you should have both fear and hope kind of. Well, how many days do we live? What day do we live? I mean, literally, are we living in what day? Every day of our life. This sounds philosophical. We're living only in today, right? We, did, we don't live in yesterday. That's over. We're not living in tomorrow. So literally every day of your life is always today. Everything you ever do will be done today. Um, now you can plan for tomorrow, but you don't act on it until tomorrow. I mean, you know, tomorrow is, is going to be the day again. It's just an interesting... I think he's talking about just contra, being conscious of the day that you're in. Every day is the day we should fear or hope from. So that's the only thing we got to work with is today. Uh, okay, here comes 25. First night again. Who's our first night? I, f I forgot the first night. You're the fourth night, right? No, you're the fourth night, right. And who's somebody here? One, two, and who's the third night? One, two, three, four, four. All right. So, Brian, you're first. No, I missed three. I'm one. Okay, that's fine. I, uh, sit down and join us. <laughs> you're like you're going to spring out any moment. I think I always got to be on my toes. Yeah, I know. I like that attitude. <laughs> Servants of the king, and known to us, you are welcome. Have you ridden far? Not far today, but matters urgent. Have brought us from France. We rode hard. Took ship yesterday. Landed last night. Having business with the Archbishop. Having business with the Archbishop. That's a euphemism for what? Um, it's a double entendre, isn't it? Yeah, our business, yeah, we're going to give him the business, so to speak. Yeah, it sounds pretty harmless. We did business with him, yeah. Your business is murder. No, that's why they're here. Believe me, you'll know when he dies. That's a big part of the story. Yeah, we can't just rush past that. Can yeah, oh, by like, the way, he died two pages ago, and you missed it. Why, why, why the knife here? To kill him. Oh. All right, so um, second night. Now, underline that. By the king's order. We don't know that that's true. We don't know if the king ordered, but they said it. So they certainly thought that they were doing the king's orders. So if they kill him, which they will, then who, who's responsible? Henry. Henry. Yeah. First night. Our men are outside. You know the archbishop's hospitality. We are about to go to dinner. The good arch archbishop would be vexed if we did not offer you entertainment before your business. Please dine with us. Your men shall be looked after also. Dinner before business. Do you like roast pork? Business before dinner. We will roast your pork first and dine upon it after. Okay, what does he mean by that? He'll kill him first. Right, these are all, I don't think of a better word. You know, I, well, euphemism is instead of saying somebody crazy, uh, they're a little touched in the head. They're, you know, those are euphemisms. Um, and crazy is not a, not a very good word either, but it's not a euphemism. It, it actually is a crude thing to say, but it, euphemism would be a nice way. He passed away instead of saying he died. He went to glory. I prefer those, but they're euphemisms for dying. Um, so that's kind of what they're using. That's probably not the best word for this. Second night. We must see the Archbishop. Go, tell his lordship. Thomas long and leaves you just waiting. Thomas comes in. Uh, however certain our expectation of the moment foreseen may be unexpected. When it arrives, it comes. Okay, when make sure you follow the punctuation. It says the moment may be unexpected when it arrives, period. That's when you stop. It comes when we are engrossed with matters of other urgency. On my table, you will find the papers in order and the documents signed. You are welcome, whatever your business may be. You say from the king. Before you go on, the moment foreseen may be unexpected when it arrives. What do you mean by that? Oh, look at my house. 
but you were expecting it. It says the moment for seeing. Have you ever had an experience like that? Mm-hmm. Knew it was coming, and then you know your brother's hiding behind the door, and you know he's there, and you open the door, and he still scares you when he jumps out. Getting a shot. Yeah. You, you, oh, you know it's coming, and then uh, oh, you know, then you're, you're shocked when it happens. It's, it's just a kind of a reality. Um, first night, uh, we got to stop. We'll stop right here. Um, we're, in, we're in pretty good shape. Um, I don't think I'm, I don't know. No, I can't give you a quiz. So you can go ahead and start the next group of words. But remember, next week we're having a test. We're not going to have a quiz and a test. We'll have the, the next quiz after Christmas. If you want to go ahead and do them, they got to get done sometime, but probably not until after. I will see you when you're ready. You may leave. Why'd you say sorry about you? <laughs> 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 